Hi juicers, another video here. This is going to be a quick one on how to post pinnable content. Uh, the idea with Pinterest, as far as your business is concerned, is to post content that people really love, that they engage in, that they find useful. And so you want to be helping them out because the more they see you, the more they're connected to you, the better your business becomes and the more sales that you get. So this is pretty simple in concept and then there are some details that we can go over later in different tutorials. The first is that you want to pin and create. So pinning is one thing. Repinning from other media sources from other websites is one. But you also want to create original content and boards with popular topics in your niche. You can spend time, now I say this for myself because I was really terrible at this, the boards or the things that I thought were really interesting to me as a graphic designer were not necessarily useful and helpful things for my customers who were purchasing invitations. So for instance, they were not super interested in the high aesthetics of design like I was. They were interested in well, what are the popular fonts to use? And once I started understanding like, oh, my content really should be useful and helpful to other people and I can just sort of keep my own little esoteric self um, to my own personal Pinterest boards, uh, that is the difference. So when you want to attract customers, think about what is going to be helpful for them. One really great way to do it is to go back to that search section and search for something within your niche and try to see what other ideas come up in the search content. So if you are an interior decorator and or maybe you have a lifestyle blog and it includes some home design, you want to go into, if you're thinking about doing a post or like what kind of post should I put next that would be really helpful and popular on Pinterest, then you go in and you search for the idea. So in this case, you're thinking, eh, I think I might want to do something on framing ideas. Type in framing ideas and see. Oh, actually the most popular thing people search for is framing ideas for photos, specifically. And then the other one is framing ideas for DIY. Is yours going to be a DIY? Do you want to do a picture? Do you want to do creative ideas? Do you want to use those words, those keywords, in your post? Yes, all of those things. That's already popular. You can already do something that you know is going to be a great contribution to what people are already looking for. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and you don't have to be them. This is a great sort of sneaky peek into uh, the wording people use and what they're interested in. Then you can also go into the enhanced search and see if you want to refine your content with these other popular search items. And again, this is another great way to retain those keywords and use them both in the naming of your image, in the text content of your blog post, and, um, and in your title of your blog post. These are great ways to figure out what people are looking for and how you can get in on the action. Then the other key factor is that you really want to make powerful, fantastic images. The best images that you can think of. The clearest images that you can communicate. So a few top items, and I've got a separate video on actually how to make images using Canva, which I think is really helpful. Um, you want to make sure that your images are taller than they are wide. And the reason for that is just that uh, the Pinterest home feed will show the, the actual size of the image. The longer your image is, even if they're scrolling down, they're going to see that image a lot uh, for a few more seconds than they are a super short uh, image. They're going to swing past that a lot faster. So the longer your image is, the more eye-catching. Ultimately, it's going to be as people scroll down in their feed. You want to use a minimum amount of text and uh, you want to say exactly what you mean to say. So here we are, you know, bridesmaids dresses under $150. They're not being more complicated than that. They're not saying which ones. They're not filling the, the image up with text. They're doing a really fun, dynamic, bright image and then adding just a short line of text. In the um, 
you want to use high quality photos. You can see with both of these images, they are done professionally or as professionally as they can. They don't look like they were taken on your dining room table underneath some fluorescent lighting with, um, you know, your settings not done right on your iPhone. You can do a lot to make your images look really fantastic. Just pay close attention to that. You want some high quality photos that are clear and crisp and colorful. You can use multiple images. That helps to create length and also give different ideas of what it is, different visual cues as to what it is you're offering. So in this example of the popsicles, the clearly the person who was taking these photos had several photos that looked great and were fun and it just extends the length of the uh, posted image and looks great too. Gives people a different idea of what they're, what they're offering. And then also show what you're offering. Show the final product. Um, it's a little bit confusing to show a process shot if what you're really offering is the final item. Uh, unless you say so. But it, so if you wanted to, if, you, if the idea was that you were showing a process, if that was the goal of your image, then make sure you show several steps of the process. People very quickly will understand, ah, oh, okay, this is a DIY, I get it. And then use your limited amount of text to show and say exactly what you're offering. You're offering a DIY, you're offering a recipe. Um, so that is just to be very, very clear, very concise. And you will find that um, those, two, those two factors, uh, the popularity of your search and um, the, the clarity and communication of your images will, will do a great deal of good in your pinnable images. Um, so take a look at the video on how to make great images. I think you're going to find that really helpful. And thanks for listening. We'll talk to you soon.